We're gonna talk about a new product line here from EK. This, you guys have been messaging the crap out of me about talk about this because these are aluminum water kits and I'm gonna warn you right now, if you're from the UK and you get you know triggered when I say aluminum and not aluminium, get ready because I'm gonna say aluminum a lot in this video. Bring out the bling in your PC with Corsair's new Vengeance RGB series DDR4 memory with its hassle-free lighting controls and superior overclocking performance. Click the link in the description to learn more. So there's actually three new SKUs in EK's fluid gaming lineup. There's the A120, the A240, and the A240G. Now the G doesn't stand for gangsta or old school or anything like that. It basically just adds a graphics card water block inside the kit. That's what we're gonna be focusing on today because I want to take my test bench here. I'm gonna water cool my GTX 1080 and the CPU, and we're gonna see how well it actually does. We're gonna talk about a couple of things as well. A lot of people are really freaked out about the fact that these kits are made out of aluminum, but EK themselves have thought about that. Obviously, a lot of things are cooled with aluminum, your car, aluminum heads, aluminum blocks. So is it really all that bad? We're gonna try and tackle some of that today. So I actually haven't opened this up yet. I wanted everything I do with this particular video to be raw and experience it for the first time on camera. Now here's the cool thing about this. Everything in here is made out of aluminum. Aluminum radiator, aluminum fittings, aluminum blocks, aluminum wall, everything. I'm gonna hope that the internals of the pump are also aluminum because normally they're a steel impeller. So I don't know if they are or aren't, so I can't actually comment to that. But that's what most people are afraid of. Most people are afraid of the whole concept of galvanic corrosion. And now there's lots of things that can cause galvanic corrosion. And there's also a lot of things that can exp uh, will expedite and speed up the process of galvanic corrosion. And one of those being mixing the two metals of copper and aluminum. So that's why they even came up with their aluminum fittings. So we got our fans right here. They include two EK Vardar 1850 RPM fans. These are the black and gray ones. We've got 3 8 inch tubing, which is very common for systems like this size. We've got a triple fan splitter here which is kind of ironic because we only have a 240 millimeter radiator fan, a radiator, so I would have liked to have seen a 360 with this kit because we're cooling a GPU as well. So that's one of the reasons why I'm testing this config is I wanna see how well a 240 can handle both a GPU and a CPU in the same loop. You get your SATA power plug here, presumably for the pump. Our pump res is a combo. This is extremely light. This is way lighter than any DDC I've ever held. In fact, I don't even think this is a DDC. Here is our EK Supremacy AX block. It is an aluminum block, as you can see right there. It's a polished aluminum. It's so lightweight, it actually feels like kind of fake. It feels like, like some sort of a little like plastic mock-up, but it is of course metal. That's one of the benefits to aluminum too, is it's pretty lightweight. We've got our EK Cryo Fuel. It is a concentrate, so the only thing you really need to add to this is your distilled water. And it looks like this dilutes into, I'm gonna assume a liter? Yes, it's, so this is a 100 milliliter bottle and you mix it to 900 milliliters of uh, distilled water. We've got some more compression fittings right here. They're so lightweight. Wow, they're so lightweight because they're aluminum, again. I'm going to assume that this is our radiator. It is so freaking light, yep. Again, aluminum radiator. Okay, you've, you've felt a lot of radiators right here, right? Working yeah. with me in this channel? Feel this. Dude. It feels, it feels fake, right? Yeah. It's just, aluminum is so incredibly light compared to copper. When you're used to copper and brass blocks, yeah, this is, yeah. I got a little news flash though, for the people that are terrified about the whole concept of aluminum, you know those AIOs you put in your system, all the Asetech stuff, stuff from uh, Cooler Master, Corsair, whatever, news flash, most of them are running Asetech radiators, which are also aluminum, so yeah. Let's go ahead and not jump the gun here on the whole hate bandwagon when it comes to aluminum. Okay, and here is our GPU block. Again, everything you need to install it. Not sure if this one actually, oh, you know what? There's the question. You actually get a backplate with this. Holy crap. I'm gonna double check the price on this because I definitely don't want to misquote this. I'm gonna have you hold this block too, man. Check this out. Because you've, you've held the blocks as well. Yeah. Dude, no. <laughs> right? It just feels weird. Is this real? Is this real life? <laughs> uh, but the fact you also get a, a backplate with it. Now here's the coolest part about this. This is actually, the, so this block right here says it supports a Founders Edition 1070, 1080, Titan X, 
new Titan XP, and 1080 Ti. You know how they're able to do that? They've actually milled out all the areas that might conflict on these different cards, but it still touches GPU, VRM, and memory. So you have one block that's actually cross-compatible with all, what was that, four or five cards? That's pretty cool. But here's the best part about all of this. Everything you see here, guys, 239 US dollars. Do you know how much just a copper GPU block is with no backplate, they usually are about 115 to 129 dollars. So if you do the math on that, this is a hell of a bargain. We're not gonna do a base, base run on the graphics card because we already know it's gonna hit 84C because it is a founder's card and it will hit thermal max. So let's go ahead and install this and compare the temps. All right, so we've been playing here for a little while, trying to load up the CPU and the GPU at the same time. I'm curious as to how this little 240 RAD is gonna perform. So far, it actually doesn't feel too bad. We are, uh, I'll show you guys the, the temperatures in a second here, I'm a little bit of a firefight. But we are running 1080p on high settings. Uh, actually, what are we? We're, at, we're running 1080p at very high. Uh, and of course, we have got 16 threads of performance here trying to be cooled. And here's what the temps look like. Currently, our cores are sitting in the 40s and our GPU is sitting at 43 at 98% load at 1886 megahertz. It's not overclocked or anything like that. This is just the base uh, boost clock. But look at these core temps right here, both CPU and GPU, everything's in the 40s. That is pretty damn impressive. So as you saw, gaming was fine, right? This 240 RAD is more than enough to keep the 1080, uh, GTX 1080 Founders Edition cool and this, the CPU at the same time. Everything was sitting in the mid 40s. Right now, this has been running Ada 64 for a while, and we are sitting with the temps averaging, geez, they're anywhere between 58C and I see 70C on the cores. Max we ever saw on here was 78. Uh, so pretty much the same as what we were seeing with the triple radiator solution. And this is a thinner rad made out of aluminum and it's smaller. So obviously you can see when it comes to heat dissipation, this is actually, uh, my, three, my 360 rad is obviously overkill for a CPU. And this is handling a single GPU just fine in an open test bench situation like this. People are pretty much conditioned to hate the idea of aluminum water cooling. 
Well, here's the thing. Aluminum itself is not the problem. The problem is when you mix aluminum with other metals, it can accelerate the process of galvanic corrosion. Your cars, most of them today, modern engines have aluminum heads, aluminum blocks, brass radiators, and they're mixed metals. So you have to have some sort of corrosion and uh, inhibitor in there to keep growth as well as corrosion from happening. Now, galvanic corrosion is something that can happen even without fluid. Okay, it's, it's really fascinating if you go and read up on it. And I'm no chemist, so I'm not gonna be able to do a very good job at explaining it, so I'm not even gonna try. But I'm gonna tell you right now that EK has gone through the steps and they've gone through the effort to make sure that that's not a problem here. They're using the same grade of aluminum, all, all their aluminum parts. They even have warning labels saying, do not mix these parts with brass and copper components. You have to use them with approved components for that very reason. Now, why'd they even bother making them out of aluminum? Well, easy, it's a heck of a lot cheaper than making things out of copper. And it allows us to have a full custom loop like this, including a GPU for 239 US dollars. This is opening up the door for way more people to get into water cooling without breaking the bank. And fortunately, they put everything into a kit that's gonna keep it as safe and as reliable as possible. Now, here's the part where I'm gonna get a little bit subjective. I would have loved to have seen a triple radiator because an expanded unit like this would definitely have taken advantage of a triple rad a little bit more than a, dual, a, tool, a 240 in my mind. And I do know that if this is a just a, a off the shelf aluminum radiator used by a lot of AIO companies, I do know that they also make a 360, so that would have been nice to see, especially when you add a GPU to the loop. Temps are obviously fine, but we're also in a controlled space. If you're in a warmer environment, the temps are gonna be higher. But I'm not worried about galvanic corrosion. I'm honestly not. In fact, I'm probably gonna set up a loop just to let this thing run for a while and we'll go back and visit it in a few months and see what happens. But I'm not expecting anything to happen. So when you create a product that's part of a genre that's usually way too expensive for many people to experience, that you bring it down to an affordable place, more people can afford it and more people can enjoy it, that's a good thing. And as long as they've done their, their due diligence and make sure that we're not gonna have problems with the aluminum here, then I think we're, we're gonna be fine. I mean, the fluid that they have here obviously has anti-corrosion properties to it. And that on top of it being all the same metal, shouldn't be an issue. I think it's a realistic fear a lot of people have because like I said, we've been conditioned for that. But sound off in the comments, tell me what you guys think and tell me what you think about those temps. And the price to performance ratio on this kit is damn near unbeatable. All right guys, thanks for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Fuck away from me.